Welcome everybody. My name is Saskia Hilteman and in this video I will walk you through understanding the galaxy history system. So we have a nice tutorial on this topic. You can find it in the topic using galaxy and managing your data which you can find from the homepage of the uh, GTN. Once you scroll down past these uh, scientific topics you have this galaxy tips and tricks and if you click on this topic you see that we have a lot of topics about uh, the Galaxy interface itself, uh, about uploading data, histories, workflows, you name it. Uh, so today we're going to run through the basics of the Galaxy history system real quick. Um, so different releases of Galaxy, um, how the uh, history system works may uh, be slightly different and how it looks. Um, so this one was recorded on version uh, 2301. Um, and I will walk you through the changes here. Okay, so you see here uh, your familiar galaxy with the tools on the left, our working panel in the center, and our history on the right. Uh, you see that I have already added some um, data sets to this history. So every item in your history um, represents a file. Um, they are numbered just in order that they were added to the history. Um, and you can uh, name them. Let's start with naming our history. So whenever we have a history, um, by default, it'll be called unnamed history, um, but it's um, a good idea to always find a good name for your history. So we're just gonna call this something like example history. And then to save it, there's this button at the bottom and you see it changed that. Now you probably noticed that there were some more options here. So let's hit this pencil icon again. Uh, so we can also add some tags, for example. Um, so if you want a little bit more information that maybe you can't all capture in the title, you can add here uh, anything you want to remember about this um, history. So maybe the uh, project it was for or the data set you analyzed. So um, you can choose here from anything you've used before uh, or you can just type something new. So let me uh, say something like project A. Uh, you can add as many tags as you want. So you can say cohort um, 17, just anything that uh, you want to remember. Um, and if you want to remove tags, you can just hit this little X icon like that. Um, and if you want a little bit more detailed information, you can also use this annotation box. So here you can really sort of describe in a couple of uh, paragraphs what you did in this history. So you can say, uh, this history contains an analysis of, well, whatever um, you did in that history. And the nice thing here is that if you share this history with other people or if you publish it on Galaxy, um, this will be visible too. So uh, it's really a description of what you did that if you want to share or publish. Uh, and we can hit save again. Okay, um, so you see also here some extra information about the history. So you see here the size, this current history is uh, four megabytes, these two files. Um, at the top right of Galaxy, you also see um, your quota, how much you are using. So uh, I have plenty of space left, but if this number is getting close to 100, you might want to look into your histories, find large ones that you don't need anymore and delete them. Um, so let's see for a sec, uh, tagging we did, annotating, three size. Um, yeah, so if you add, if you run jobs, if you, uh, or add data sets via the upload, they will appear here. Uh, they're green now, so that means everything went okay uh, with uh, creating the, the data sets. Um, but if you run a job, you may see some other colors. So uh, when you first start a job, your data sets will be gray. That means um, Galaxy knows this file will be created, but it's still waiting for the job to actually run. Then um, when the job is running, it turns orange like this. Um, and then when it's finished, it turns either green or uh, red if there was an error. Um, and it can also be paused. That means that like, there wasn't, uh, an error with a previous data set that this job is dependent on. So uh, this is pause now until you resolve that error. Okay, so each of these 
data sets in your history also has a couple options. So if you click on that, it will be expanded. Um, you can see some information. So this is a bed file, uh, a file with chromosomal locations and Galaxy knows a little bit about um, this, this file format. So it can tell us some information, uh, the number of regions that are in this file, for example. Uh, you can see that you can also add tags to um, data sets. Again, if you want to um, remember anything about this, um, and if you put a hashtag in front, um, this will this tag will also um, live with the data set. So if you um, run any jobs on this data set, those resulting data sets will also um, have this tag. Um, there's a nice tutorial specifically about this and how you can use it to better manage your analyses. Um, so you see here that without expanding, you have the eye icon that will like, show you the contents of the file in the middle. Um, you have also this pencil icon. Um, Okay, there it goes, it loads. There you can see really the contents of the file. You click on this pencil icon. You can edit the attributes. So you can also change the name here to make this a little bit more, uh, more informative. So let's say uh, repeats on chromosome 22, just be a little bit more specific, for example. Um, you can add a uh, reference genome here. So if you, for example, have a BAM file that was aligned against a specific reference genome, you can choose that here and uh, Galaxy can use this information uh, in some of the tools in order to um, use the right reference again. Um, so we can um, save that again with the save button. Um, and then you see the name was updated here. Uh, yeah. Now you can also um, delete data sets from your history with this delete button. So now uh, it's gone from my history. So you can do that if you um, added a file by accident or if this went wrong and you're um, trying to keep your history clean. Um, you see now that this icon up here also uh, appeared. So this is uh, tells me that there's one active data set in my history and one deleted one. So if I want to still see the deleted one because it wasn't actually removed yet. It's just hit, um, deleted from my data set and, and now I can still view the file and edit it. And if I want to undelete it, I can click this undelete button and it'll come back into my history. Um, you see now that by clicking on that um, rubbish bin icon, I filtered up here my data set for deleted is true. So now I can clear that filter again to show everything. Um, and this box can be used for any sort of searching. So I can say, let's say I have 100 files in my um, history and I don't want to scroll to find the one, but I know, I remember that I called it exons. You can say here exons and it will filter for anything that matches. There's some more advanced searches you can do here. So they are listed also in um, this tutorial. So let us uh, go there. So you can also really specifically um, tag, um, search for example, for a certain file extension. So you can say extension VCF, um, nothing there, bed. Okay, because these are both bed files, it'll find it. So here, if you're looking for specific data set in a large history, um, the search option is very, useful. Um, now there are also things that you can uh, do. So um, there, you may have already encountered collections in Galaxy. Um, so this is really if you have a large number of samples and you want to run an analysis on this entire batch of samples at once, uh, but you don't want to uh, run the tool manually for every one of them, um, you can make a, a collection. And certain ways that you can do that um, is using this sort of um, this checkbox to manage multiple data sets at once. And here you can select files from your history that you want to apply an action to. Um, you can also use a select all button if you want to do it for everything. 
And then there are multiple options here. If you click on this, all to selected, um, you can do sort of bulk operations. So you can hide all of them. You can delete all of them. You can delete all of them permanently. So then there's no longer an undelete button. Uh, and you can build a collection um, or add tags to all of them at once, uh, things like that. So that's really nice if you need to do repeat the same operation on many different um, data sets in your history. Um, so let's say I want to turn this into a data set list, a collection, um, then that is the option. And you can give here a, uh, a name for your collection, uh, bed files, for example, create collection. And I see that those two files have been replaced with this uh, one collection. Um, we can exit this selection mode again uh, by clicking on this check mark uh, box again. Um, so now you see, for example, that we have one history item, which behind the scenes is uh, both of these files that we had. Now you may create as many histories as you want, and it's advised that you um, create a new history for every uh, analysis that you do. Um, so then if you wanna switch back and forth between histories, there are multiple things you can do. So at the top here, these arrow buttons uh, will show you a list of your histories uh, in order of uh, when you last updated them. And then you can switch to a different history. So you see here I have, um, a couple that I've used before. And then if I click on this, um, it'll change my active history and load that one. Uh, and then I'll just gonna change back here. Now there may also want be uh, times where you want to compare histories. So if you ha uh, go to this, um, let's see, didn't switch yet, let's do that. Oh, wait, no, I'm clicking the wrong button. I want to go back to the example history. There we go. Um, so load this one again. So if you want to sort of compare two histories side by side um, and maybe uh, move some files between them, uh, you can do that here. So we have this uh, little drop down menu for history options. This used to be the um, gear button. Um, so here you see that I have in total 40 histories. Um, you can copy a history as well. So if you want just a copy of the history in its current state uh, before you, for example, try some experimental um, uh, analysis, you can do that. Um, you can also delete the entire history. So if you want to get rid of it, free up some space, um, you can do that. Um, you can extract a workflow from your history. Again, we have a better tutorials that will deal with that. Um, there are lots of nice things you can do. And yes, you can share this history with other people or with everyone on the Galaxy server. Uh, but let's have a look at this uh, show history side by side because it's quite useful. Um, so here it'll show your current history. Um, and then you can select any other histories you want to also display. So here there's nothing displayed yet. Uh, so we're gonna click on the select histories now let's say we want to compare it again with this um, other history. Um, so this is just a really a random history that I already had. But here you can see, and you can do as many as you want. Um, let's add this one. Um, so now you can, can compare these side by side. Uh, but one nice thing you can also do is you can drag here um, data sets between history. So if I, uh, let's say I want to have this file that I used in this other history for analysis, if I want to also have that in this history, I can just drag it over like that and it will be copied. Data set copy to history, to my history, and I can start using it. So this is definitely a lot better than re-uploading the file again, because now there's only one copy and you don't have any duplicated data. Uh, so you save some space. And now if you want to uh, hide this again, you can um, say hide or directly from this menu, you can also switch to this uh, history. And now for this history that I had, you may have seen this um, icon that we didn't have before. Um, so files can also be hidden. And this is just to keep your um, history a little bit clean, but um, 
you, you still want to keep the data. You just don't want to show it by default. Um, so this often happens when you run workflows and they can be configured to only show the most important outputs of a tool and hide some of the intermediary data. But if you do want to look at these files, you can click on this um, button. You see here that that created this uh, visible equals false filter. And then we can see here everything that has been hidden for this um, history. And you can also unhide things here again. Um, so this is a little bit different than deleting, um, but also very useful. Um, so and now if we want to show our normal view again, we can clear this search filter. Um, OK, so let's um, say we want to delete this workflow. Um, so we go to the history options again. We can say delete the history, I mean, not workflow. Um, say confirm. Um, but anything in Galaxy, when you delete it, it's not um, so maybe uh, retrieved again. Uh, so if that was a mistake, um, it might still be around. Um, so if you want to check this, you can go to uh, this user menu at the top and view all your histories in this way. And now you get a um, little bit different view, but you can um, do some more advanced searches here. Um, so you can search again for names and tags in this, in this advanced search. You can also um, look for your deleted histories and you still get a chance to undelete them um, or you can purge them forever. Uh, so if you really want to clean up that space, um, to, to clean up more space, disk space, you have to delete them first and then click here to delete permanently to get that space back. Um, but if it was a mistake, you can always still undelete it. OK, I think these are the basic things you need to know about uh, the history. You have this refresh button that shows you when it was last refreshed. So if you have a bad internet connection, maybe um, this hasn't been refreshed recently. And then you can also manually hit this button. So if your data sets are, aren't turning green, for example, um, double check that. Okay, so with that, I think you know uh, the basics. Um, there is a little bit more information in this tutorial if you uh, want to see it, and um, the rest you'll probably pick up during other uh, tutorials. So thank you for watching and enjoy.